Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launch of our 13th SR Nathan Fellow, Professor Joseph Liao's book, Navigating Uncertainty, Our Region in an, a in an Age of Flux. We are grateful to everyone for taking the time to join us today and are delighted to have Minister of Education, Mr. Chan Chun Singh here as our guest of honour. Mr. Janadas Devan, Director of IPS, will begin with his welcome remarks. He will be followed by Mr. Minister Chan and finally, Professor Joseph Liao. We will then launch the book. After the launch, there will be a book signing session with Professor Liao. Before we begin, please book your mobile phones on silent mode. For other distinguished guests, friends of IPS and members of the public unable to join us in person today, we have invited them to tune into our Facebook page where we are live streaming the, the event. The live stream can also be watched after the event on our IPS Facebook page and YouTube channel. Online purchase of Professor Liao's book is now available on World Scientific Publishing's website. For the months of July and August, all volumes of the IPS Nader Lecture Series, including Professor Liao's book, can be purchased online with a 20% discount. Enter the promo code WSIPS20 for 20% of your purchase. Now, without further ado, Mr. Janadas Devon, Director of IPS, will deliver his welcome remarks. Director, please. Minister Chan Chun Singh, our 13th SR Nathan Fellow, Professor Joseph Liao, distinguished guest. Welcome to the launch of Navigating Uncertainty. We're about to, the design will be, uh, is underneath that cover. Um, um, a culmination of the three lectures Professor Liao gave us as our 13th SR Nathan Fellow. And thank you, Minister Chan, for agreeing to launch the book. Professor Liao's lectures offered us valuable perspectives on current tides of geopolitical tensions from the rise of China against the current US influence, if not US-led global order to the impact of the Israel-Hamas conflict on our region. He advised Singapore should avoid casting US-China competition in binary terms and noted that Singapore should make itself relevant to both America's as well as China's strategic economic and commercial interests, so, to quote him, so that neither would want to make us choose. Professor Liao brought the discussion closer to home in his final lecture, which focused on the impact of global forces on Singapore, as well as our immediate neighbors. His insights on how the Israel-Hamas conflict, as well as the rise of China's influence, has interacted with identity politics in the region I thought were particularly insightful and I would urge all of you to read the last chapter. The SR Nathan Fellowship for the Study of Singapore was named to honor our sixth president. Since its inception in 2014, we have had 14 SR Nathan Fellows. Mr. Tan Chong Meng, I'm not sure whether he's here. Uh, our 14th recently concluded his lecture series, um, Exploring Global Trade and Singapore's Place as a World Connector. His book will be launched early next year. We asked both Professor Liao and Mr. Tan consciously and deliberately to specifically showcase different perspectives on how Singapore could position itself amidst both the evolving geopolitical as well as geoeconomic scene. Our 15th fellow will be Professor Lily Kong, uh, President of Singapore's SMU. She has been asked to speak about the potential topic of the idea of the university. Um, um, so um, um, I, I look forward to that. Uh, beyond Professor Kong, we have lined up, among others, Mr. Piyush Gupta, Mr. Philip Yeo, and Dr. Sean Lum, among others. Finally, I would like to express, again, my gratitude to Professor Liao for his outstanding contributions to the SR Nathan Fellowship and for his efforts in presenting a nuanced analysis of a very complex subject. It is actually very difficult to speak simply but intelligently and expertly to a broad audience on such matters. I thought Professor Liao did it admirably, continuing in the tradition established by earlier SR Nathan fellows, some of whom are here, including the likes of Professor Wang Gangwu and uh, Professor Chan Heng Chi. Uh, I think this is SR Nathan's fellowship's biggest contribution um, to Singapore. It is a series that has, I think, raised the level of discourse on various issues of importance to Singaporeans. 
and I hope that we will continue to do so. Thank you very much for attending this launch. Thank you, Director. May I now invite our guest of honour, Minister Chan Chun Singh, to deliver his remarks. Minister, please. A very good afternoon to all of you. A pleasure to join you this afternoon or evening for the launch of uh, Joseph's latest book on navigating uncertainty. And let me also thank Joseph for his contribution to this discussion within Singapore. And I hope that the issues raised by Joseph will not just stay within the academia, but to really go beyond the academia to ignite discussions amongst wider Singaporeans so that we can better understand the issues that we have to grapple with. Today, our world grapples with a confluence of economic, geopolitical, and social forces that drives us to reassess Singapore's strategies and approaches. And this is where Joseph's book makes an important contribution. Are we surprised? Should we be surprised by the current state of affairs? Perhaps not. The breakdown of the rules-based order exemplified by conflicts around the globe today underscore a world where established norms are increasingly challenged. We are observing a troubling retreat from the global rules-based trade system to protectionism and industry, industrial policies in various guises, undermining the economic interdependence that have been a cornerstone of global prosperity for the last few decades. Meanwhile, political landscapes are shifting from consensus politics towards more extreme and polarised positions, accentuating the forces pulling societies apart. And the domestic issues and the international issues often reinforce one another. And let me explain why. But beyond all this, we are also having to deal with climate change and many other global issues. Overall, all these series of events contribute to a general sense of unease about the future and our place in it. And this applies not just to Singapore, but to all parts of the world. So the question for us is how do we navigate this age of uncertainty? And let me share three reflections from Joseph's book on leadership, mindsets, and agency. Let me start with leadership. In such a world, leadership is paramount. There cannot be international cooperation and coherence of rules without domestic cohesion, consistency, and confidence. There cannot be international cooperation and coherence of rules without domestic cohesion, consistency, and confidence. We must be honest with our people about our challenges. Externalizing our problems is never the solution. Instead, we must look at the issues squarely in the eye, address them with transparency and resolve. Global competition is fierce, but protectionism, while seemingly a quick fix, will not enhance global efficiency or improve our people's lives in the long run. Trade will require countries to adjust their industries and jobs. Key is to help our people to manage these adjustments. This applies to Singapore as it applies to the rest of the world. Rapid changes in technology could change or even displace jobs. We need to invest in education and training to help our people rescue, to seize the opportunities and overcome the challenges. The fruits of our economic growth may not naturally be distributed evenly so policy actions are required to ensure a more equitable access to opportunities, without which the social compact may easily fracture. All these tasks demand leadership with honesty, gumption, and vision. Next, mindsets. There also cannot be international cooperation without a clear appreciation of the dynamics with partner countries. And again, this is where Joseph's book makes an important contribution. While, personal, while personalities matter, they are often reflections of deeper societal currents. 
We need to understand the fears, concerns and aspirations of the other party if we are to find spaces for feasible co collaboration. We must avoid the laziness of mind that reduces complex global issues to simplistic binaries such as good versus evil, democratic versus authoritarianism, left versus right, and so forth. These labours hinder our ability to find common ground. Historical interpretations can both illuminate and yet confine us. We are all familiar with the saying, those who do not read history are bound to repeat it. Yet at the same time, I must say, those who are captured by history are also equally bound to repeat it. If we use old concepts, then we become prisoners of those ideas. Choosing sides in a polarised world is unconstructive. It takes a lot more effort to transcend divides, bridge differences and find new possibilities for cooperation. But that is the only way to move forward to foster peace and stability. And now I come to my third reflection on agency. There cannot be international order without dialogue and cooperation. A fragmented world, coupled with fractious domestic politics and fragile social compacts, creates a vicious cycle, often reinforcing one another. We must actively seek to engage with others to break this cycle. It is through continuous engagement that we can build mutual trust and find common ground. We must understand that our collective security and prosperity depends on our ability to work together. So to conclude, what can Singapore do to navigate this age of uncertainty, or this age of heightened uncertainty? First, we need leaders with integrity, gumption and foresight. Leaders who are courageous to communicate the truth, make tough decisions and work towards sustainable solutions. A politically convenient answer to the wrong question is worse than a politically tough answer to the right question. Second, we must deepen our understanding of the global forces at play, look beyond the personalities and, and ask ourselves how all this impact on our partners' motivations and actions. This will allow us to add value, create relevance for ourselves and find common ground to cooperate. And this is one particular point that I particularly like about Joseph's book. And the question that he posed, or rather, what he says is this. Instead of keep asking ourselves which side do we choose or who do we choose, the more important question is to ask ourselves how do we not have to choose? How do we make others choose us instead? That we are a partner of choice. If we want to be a partner of choice, then we have to understand deeply the motivations of our potential partners, what we can do together, where are the red lines in order for us to create space to move forward together. And I hope more and more Singaporeans will join us in government and academia to ask this question. Not who will we choose, but how can we not choose and how can we more importantly, make others choose us. Last but not least, we will need to work with like-minded countries and corporations to shape the future. All of us have agency. It is often said that the US and China may be the two biggest power in the world, but they are about one-third of the global GDP, depending on how you count. The rest of us, the remaining two-thirds, have both agency and responsibility to act. The greater the challenges, the greater the need to keep exploring solutions with both friends and foes. Only by collaborating with the global community, we can help steer the world towards a more stable and prosperous future. So in closing, let me thank Joseph once again for his contribution to our understanding of the global world order and Southeast Asian dynamics. His book hopefully will not be just a scholarly contribution. I hope his book will challenge us, inspire us all, be it policy makers, researchers, corporations or citizens, to envision a Singapore future, a future for Singapore that not only navigates the uncertainty, 
but a future where Singapore can continue to thrive to defy the odds of history. And I'll invite you all to spend some time in the pages of the book, may contribute to our discussion and our constant search to create relevance for Singapore in a turbulent world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. May I now invite Professor Joseph Liao to deliver his remarks. Joseph Liao, please. Minister Chan Chun Seng, Minister of Education, Mr. Janadas Devan, Director IPS, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. A very good afternoon to all of you. And thank you, Minister Chan, for agreeing to be the GOH for this event, for taking time off your busy schedule to come and launch the book, and for your very thoughtful remarks um, that you just delivered. Thank you also to IPS and Director Janadas for inviting me to be the 13th SR Nathan Fellow. It was indeed a great honour, and like I said in my first lecture, 13 will be my favourite number from now on. <laughs> I am particularly thrilled about this book launch, not because it is my first, it's actually my first, um, but because the book is published under the auspices of a fellowship named after Mr. SR Nathan who I had the great honour and privilege of working for in the early days of the Institute of Defence and Strategic Studies at NTU. By the way, Mr. Nathan would have celebrated his 100th birthday just a couple of days ago, uh, in, on Wednesday, I believe. Uh, so happy 100th birthday, uh, Mr. Nathan. As the IPS Nathan Fellow, I was asked to deliver three lectures. I will not attempt to summarise them, uh, since IPS has kindly compiled them into the book that is about to be launched. But let me share something of the thought process I went through as I prepared those lectures. My three lectures were organized under the overarching theme of uh, navigating uncertainty, our region in an age of flux. The intent was to unpack the drivers of uncertainty that Singapore faces today, insofar as our external environment is concerned, to better understand the sources of these uncertainties, to critique the intellectual and policy paradigms through which they are being analysed, and to reflect on how Singapore can not only survive, but thrive under these conditions. The lectures began with a discussion of US-China rivalry, a topic that commands immense interest in Singapore, where there are a great number of differing opinions on the matter, now, this escalation of great power competition has cast a shadow over institutions of global governance and precipitated anxieties about the resilience of the so-called uh, post-World War II US-led global order. This should not be surprising, given that to many, the global order is, in many respects, basically an expression of, and indeed, some would argue, an extension of American power. As a consequence, the idea of global order has become heavily contested today in terms of whose interests it really represents and the values ascribed to it. Because some of these values are perceived to privilege the interests of advanced economies, most of which are found either in the transatlantic region or Western Europe, it should hardly be surprising that they have encountered resistance from many quarters in the so-called global south representing a majority of the world's population and that emerged from under the yoke of colonialism not too long ago. As the arc of history bends, we find ourselves entering a world that is becoming fundamentally different from what many of us have grown familiar and comfortable with. In the West, strategy is thought of in terms of the game of chess. In China, it is thought of in terms of weighty or go. But how do you strategize a virtual, multi-screen, multiplayer world that is real-time, driven by AI, AR, and VR technologies, where all rules are being challenged and undermined, and new ones yet to be determined? The Italian philosopher Antonio Gramsci famously said, the world is dying, the new world struggles to be born, now is the time of monsters. 
a bit melodramatic, perhaps. Uh, Gramsci is, after all, a Marxist, uh, but also not too far from the truth. My lectures were delivered in October and November last year. This was the time when the Russia-Ukraine war was being fought to a stalemate. Tragedy unfolded in Gaza, and the political temperature was rising in cross-straits relations. It set me wondering about Southeast Asia, and in particular, the politics of identity that has always been a feature of our region's social, cultural, and historical landscape. Now, Southeast Asia is in many ways a thriving region today, stable, secure, prosperous. But lest we forget, barely 50 years ago, it was commonplace to hear people talking about Southeast Asia as a region in revolt. As fairly new post-colonial states still grappling with conceptions of nationhood, identity-based fault lines remain a reality, and they bear heavily on how local, national, and geopolitics unfolds. The Scottish nationalist philosopher Andrew Fletcher once wrote, Let me write the songs of the nation. I care not who writes its laws. His point is that the essence of a nation's values and outlook derive not from its laws or even its political processes, but from the deep reservoirs of culture and identity that inform perceptions of who we are. While identities are, of course, never ossified, they do tend to endure, and when provoked, elicit emotive responses. And when they change, they create forces that can strengthen or weaken societies. This is why I also felt compelled to address issues of race, language, and religion in Southeast Asia in relation to wider geopolitical forces that bear on them in ways that unite but also divide. Anyway, all this is discussed in greater detail in the book, which I hope you will enjoy reading. And if not, at least I can assure you it will help with your insomnia. <laughs> I would like to express my gratitude to all of you once again for attending this book launch. I also want to thank members of my family for being here today. My wife, uh, Ivy, and daughter, Megan, are seated over there. My son, Ewan, is busy serving the nation. Uh, to my family, thank you for putting up with me and for always reminding me to keep it real. So have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Liao. Please remain on stage. May I now invite Minister and Director to the stage for the launch of the book, please. We will now launch the book. Professor Liao will now present Minister with a copy of the book. And now, Director will present Professor Liao with a token of appreciation from IPS. Please remain on stage for a photo together. The book is now launched. Thank you everyone for attending and have a good evening ahead.